All right, guys, so here we go. On Monday, uh, we went through just the, the properties of a rhombus and a kite, right? That's what we spent our time on on Monday. Uh, and they seem like pretty different shapes, right? They had a lot of different rules, but the one thing that they really had in common that brings them together for this lesson is that their diagonals were perpendicular to each other. Right, that was like the one biggie that both these shapes had in common, and that's why these why these go together. As we now look at um, the the second half of eleven point two. So because the rhombus, so here's a rhombus, and here's a kite. So because they both have perpendicular diagonals, they actually have the same area formula to go with it. So uh, it is simply one half times diagonal one times diagonal two. So it's gonna be the same formula for both shapes. Nathan, what do you need, dude? I think, we're, I think we're out of those. I gave all those out. So guys, in the back of your packet, remember, keep a running list of formulas. So on this back page, you can add, so we have one slot for the rhombus and the kite because they're simply the same formula. So you can throw that in to that fourth line. So take a minute to put that one in there so you can keep that list going. Guys, it's kind of similar to when we did parallelograms. And if you guys remember, the area of a parallelogram was base times height. And the main reason for that is in a parallelogram, we always look at the base as being perpendicular to the height. It's those perpendicular lines uh, that tend to lead us into an area of these four-sided shapes. And so this one's no different. So as we look at the perpendicular lines, which are the diagonals, we're gonna use those to get the area. Guys, sometimes, and we've seen this with other shapes too, sometimes those diagonals are drawn on the inside of the shape sometimes they're going to give you that information on the outside of the shape like you like you're going to see here so uh, we just know that you know as we measure from one vertex to another vertex we know that's the diagonal all right so here's the one example that they uh they kind of did for us so you can see that this diagonal that goes from here to here was a measure of seven we can see that the diagonal that goes from this guy to this guy was nine. They could have drawn that on the inside, but that's all right. Sometimes they draw them on the outside, but you can see that's the, the measure of nine. So real simple, all we had to do was plug them into our new area formula and we get our area. So one half times diagonal one times diagonal two. Let's try a couple. So we're just gonna go through these six examples and that'll be it for today. So because this is just part two of the previous lesson. And just for you guys in here, let me see if I can zoom in a little so that you can see those numbers nice and clear. So hopefully that helps a little bit. All right, here we go. So with number one, and guys, I, I would encourage you to stick with the same three lines that we were doing um, on the previous ones. I always encourage you guys to start every problem by just writing the formula. So one half times diagonal one times diagonal two. And guys, it doesn't matter which one is diagonal one or diagonal two, it's, it's all multiplication. So in multiplication, the order doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter which one you wanna call D1 or D2. So there's our formula. Let's just plug in the info. We got to figure out the lengths of our two diagonals. Guys, how do we recognize this first one as being a kite and not a rhombus? I mean, not that it really matters because they're the same formula, but I don't remember anything from what we looked at on Monday for what's the difference between the kite and the rhombus here. So one of the things we looked at on Monday was in a rhombus, the diagonals bisect each other. 
So look at number two compared to number one. Okay, in number two, you see how those segments are equal and those segments are equal. So we know that's gonna be a rhombus because both diagonals were bisected. However, on a kite, only one of the diagonals gets bisected. So these are both 20s, but you'll notice they're different here. So we know this guy's a kite. So let's, let's just pick on the easy guy first. For the short one, the total length of that diagonal, if we add up the two parts, 20 and 20, gives us one of our diagonals. And on the other one, if we add up the parts on this one, looks like 82 total. And rest is multiplication. Hey guys, and, and I think this is one of the things, I, I think this was your class that we talked about with last week, but guys, keep in mind, you can always simplify a little of this, right? I know half of 40 is 20. So if I wanted to save myself a little bit of calculator work, all right, I could easily do a little of that in my head. I could say half of 40 is 20, so 20 times 82 is going to be my area. So 1640. And we are dealing with area, so we know it's inches squared. So guys, here's kind of the three lines that I always recommend writing down. So even when you get to your test, eventually when we get there, this is exactly how I would approach every single one of these problems. I would identify the formula first, then show the substitution, and then get my answer from there. Guys, there's one er er uh, error I've often seen students make on this problem. Here, here's what they do. They look at this and they say, oh, well, I'm gonna do half of both of these. Half of that is 20, half of that is 41, so they multiply 20 times 41. It's not distribution, right? There's no pluses or minuses in here that we would need distribution for. It's all multiplication. So it's just a one-step thing. We're not distributing. All right, let's go to number two. So as we mentioned a minute ago, guys, number two has to be a rhombus because both diagonals were bisected. These guys are equal, and so are those. Same formula, though, even though it's a rhombus. So one half times diagonal one times diagonal two. So start with that formula. And if you'd rather put 0.5 there instead of one half, go for it. Just identify what those diagonals are. I'm just going to start with the shorter one. So again, with the rhombus, we know that these two parts are both equal. So if that's 10, so is that. So the whole diagonal for that one would be 20. And if we go to the longer one, same, same idea. If that one's 20, then so is that. So the total length would be 40. Bet you could do this one in your head. We know half of 20 is 10, and 10 times 40, we got 400. So guys, this is the main idea for today. One thing I just wanted to mention real quick is, guys, don't forget some of these because of the right triangles. You might have to do a little side work for you. you might have to do a little Pythagorean theorem or something like that once in a while. That stuff never goes away because we have these right triangles involved. Guys, give number three a shot, and then we're going to do the bottom group, which are a little different. So let me have you guys try number three, and then we'll move to the bottom group. Let's see if you can work ahead of me on this one.
So number three, is that a rhombus or a kite? How about any of you guys out here? Got to be a kite, right? Because the diagonals are not both bisected, right? Those ones are equal, but those ones are not, which makes it a kite. Uh, so either diagonal first doesn't matter. I'm just going to go after the big one. So 24 and 24 gives me 48. So there's one of my diagonals, the smaller one. If I add up those two values, I got 28. From there we multiply. So I'm going to do a little in my head. I know half of 48 is 24. So 672. Guys, is there any questions so far on, on, on those? That's really the main idea for today's lesson, but we're going to get to some ones on the bottom here. So let me know if you get questions. All right, some good old algebra for the bottom group. Let's take a look at number seven with me. Guys, these three that you're about to see right now are one of the other main reasons why I always encourage you to write down the formula first. Because there might be different parts of the formula that we're looking for. And we need to be able to plug things in as we find them. So this one goes back to our trapezoid. So let's just start by writing down area of a trapezoid. So we know trapezoid was one half the height times base one plus base two. All right, looks something like that. Guys, you'll notice on this one, on number seven, it's a different thing that's missing, right? They now told us the area and they want us to use that to find the height. And this is where it helps to just simply lay out the formula and plug in the pieces. Take this same approach that we've taken on all the other problems. We're just gonna plug in the, the items as we find them. So we started with the formula. We then sub in all the information that they give us. And then we'll use it to find whatever's missing. So on this one, they're telling us that the area is 164. So we can plug that in for A. That's our area. Uh, the height, that's what we're solving for. We don't know the height. We're going to call that X because that's what they put in the diagram. As far as the bases, looks like one of them is 12.8. And the other one is 20. Remember, your two bases are the ones that are parallel to each other. So there's our setup. It's one of the reasons I really like these is just good algebra practice. All right, so we got to solve for x. We just have an equation to solve here. Um, guys, there's a few different ways you could approach this. I'm going to give you two options. You do whichever one you like better. First option would be in order to get rid of the 1 half, you could simply multiply both sides by 2, and that would cancel out your 1 half. So if you want to go that route, go for it. I'll show you another one here, and then you pick your favorite. The other option would be, let's first just combine those guys together. So if I did 12.8 plus 20, I'd be looking at 32.8. And from here, because this is an even number, it's easy to work with. I can say half of 32.8 is 16.4. and get rid of the fraction that way. So that's an option. It's kind of whichever one you like first. So last, thing's lo last thing, we just divide the 16.4 uh, over. We got our height of 10.
All right, let me go over to the last two here. So guys, for number eight, looking like a rhombus. Let's see if we can solve for X. Guys, I would always encourage you to start with that formula. All right, let's start with the formula and go from there. So uh, if this is a rhombus or a kite, same formula, we'd be able to say the area is one half times diagonal one times diagonal two. And then we're gonna plug in the information that they gave us. So on this one, they're saying that the area is 340. Let's see what we can put in for our two diagonals. Because one of those diagonals is obviously 20. So that's something we could throw in. As far as the other diagonal, the one thing that I felt they could have made a little more clear on this is, is that X referring to simply half of it? Or do we think that X is referring to the entire diagonal? It was a little unclear on this one, but I think they're referring to only half of it because when I compare it to this one, the way they wrote this one, I can definitely tell X is the entire thing. But on this one with the way they threw in that little arrow that's just pointing to this piece, um, I think we can assume that they're just referring to half of it. So if that little guy is X, then that would make that little guy X as well, right? Because those diagonals were bisected. So what do we put in here for then for the, uh, the entire diagonal? So if this part is X and this part is X, if we add those together, the entire thing would simply be 2X. Now we can solve for X. Guys, same options. If you want to get rid of this one half by, by starting by multiplying both sides by two, you can do that. So if you wanted to simply multiply your two over to here, uh, you would have 680 is equal to 20 times 2X. And if you want to go that route, that's totally fine. Um, when I see even numbers, I tend to just simplify that first. If these were both odd numbers, I probably would just multiply the two over the other side. But because they're even numbers, it makes it really easy to work with by just saying, well, half of 20 is 10. And getting rid of my fraction that way. So keep going on this. We know that 10 times 2x would be 20x. So let's just divide both sides by 20. I believe we get 17. Guys, last one. See if you can go ahead of me on this one. On number nine, we'll end our notes with this, guys. I'd encourage you to start with a formula and then sub in the given information.
right, guys, I'll come back to a couple of those questions here. Let me let me finish this one off, and we'll come back to some questions. Guys, take a look at the setup. See if that looks okay to you. So they're telling us the area, so we're plugging that in for A. One of those diagonals is 22 and a half. The other one they're just calling X. So there's our substitution. Guys, here's a case where, since these are both odd numbers, it's not that easy, as easy, to deal with that one half. I mean, you could change it to a decimal, I guess, 0.5. Uh, but one thing you might consider at this point is, what if I just multiplied both sides by two in order to get rid of my one half? Let's do that on this one since we haven't done that yet. So if I did 247 and a half times two, so I would now have 495 equaling our 22.5x. So that's another way of getting rid of that fraction, right? Just multiply both sides by two and it cancels out the fraction on the right side. So now we can divide the 22 and a half over. And we got our value for X. Wait, well, Mr. Smith, I kind of lost you on where, on why you uh, multiplied 247.5 by two. It's just the opposite of this guy, right? If we want to deal with that fraction. So I basically did this. I multiplied both sides of the equation by two. So it kind of looks like this. So on the right side, what you're seeing is two times a half is one, right? So this would cancel out on the right side. And I'm looking at two times this on the left side. So remember, you can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So I just chose to multiply both sides by two in order to get rid of this on the right side. Okay, thank you. Cool. 